No, my lord. I don't know where the other nobles are. I suggest you ask Ambassador Montillier. Oh, you're him. Thryn. Inquisition Quartermaster. I'm doing what I can to supply this mess. If you find what I need to fill one of my requisitions, I'd appreciate you bringing it in. What do you do here? I make sure the Inquisition troops have food in their bellies and iron in their hands. Both are important. Lots of people expecting us to be heroes, marching all day to fight the demons. Turns out heroes need to dig latrines just like everyone else. How does someone end up as quartermaster for the Inquisition? I served for Eldon under Ten Logan McTeer. Best commanding officer this world has ever seen. After they all turned on him at Denerim, though, there wasn't much use for people who held that opinion. Queen Honora offered my services to the Inquisition. It was a kindness. She knew I supported her father and got me away from the political garbage. Logan McTeer betrayed the Grey Wardens and his king. Were you there at Ostagar? I was. King Caelan overextended his position, and the Grey Wardens were too late lighting the signal. Following the original plan would have gotten everyone killed. Turn Loghain made the right decision. I apologize. Sister Liliana told me I shouldn't talk about this. Just forget it. What did you mean when you mentioned requisitions? I'm making this Inquisition run with what we have, but we're not a real army. We're stretched thin on materials, so I've put up a requisition list for anything that could help our people. Here, take a look. You find some iron and a good logging site, maybe Harriet can get our troops better weapons. If I have material for a special order, do I bring it to you? Just take it over there. One of my boys will take the materials or jot down what you found. Farewell. Make a go with you. Thanks for checking, anyway. Sacred ask. <laughs> Look who's back from the dead. Again. I don't recall meeting you before. I'd be surprised if you did. You weren't particularly coherent. Someone had to patch you up after you staggered out of making those wear, though. So, you're welcome. I didn't realize. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you can pay me back by fixing the world. Name's Adan. I'm in charge of keeping our little band here stocked with potions and elixirs. Not that Seeker Pentagast seems to care whether we've got the supplies to actually do that. For a healer, you don't seem particularly nurturing. I'm not a healer. I'm an alchemist who's forced to play Mother Hen. You want something to burst into flame on contact with the air? Done. Gladly. Patching up wounded soldiers is a waste of my time and talents. But there are few around who can help. How are your people holding up? There's no shortage of work. That's for damn sure. How do I go about having potions made? Just take a look there and tell me what you'd like. Find a recipe for something better, I can make that too. You're back. And in one piece. Is there anything I can do to help out? We're fine as far as raw labor goes. You've more important things to do than tend to me. I only wish I'd been able to find Master Tajin's notes. Old bastard was working on something special. He died at the Conclave, and his notes weren't here. Been too busy dealing with the wounded to look for them. Farewell. Perhaps another time.
the Chosen of Andraste, a blessed hero sent to save us all. I have no interest in being a hero. All I want is to find a way to seal this breach. Pragmatic, but ultimately irrelevant. I've journeyed deep into the Fade in ancient ruins and battlefields to see the dreams of lost civilizations. I've watched as hosts of spirits clash to reenact the bloody past in ancient wars both famous and forgotten. Every great war has its heroes. I'm just curious what kind you'll be. What do you mean, ruins and battlefields? Any building strong enough to withstand the rigors of time as a history. Every battlefield is steeped in death. Both attract spirits. They press against the veil, weakening the barrier between our worlds. When I dream in such places, I go deep into the Fade. I can find memories no other living being has ever seen. You fall asleep in the middle of ancient ruins. Isn't that dangerous? I do set wards. And if you leave food out for the giant spiders, they are usually content to live and let live. I've never heard of anyone going so far into the Fade. That's extraordinary. Thank you. It's not a common field of study for obvious reasons. Not so flashy as throwing fire or lightning. The thrill of finding remnants of a thousand-year-old dream? I would not trade it for anything. I will stay then, at least until the breach has been closed. Was that in doubt? I am an apostate surrounded by Chantry forces in the middle of a mage rebellion. Cassandra has been accommodating, but you understand my caution. Cassandra trusts you. She won't let anyone put you into a circle against your will. Thank you. I appreciate the thought. But now let us hope either the mages or the Templars have the power to seal the breach. Closing the breach is our primary goal. But I hope we might also discover what was used to create it. Any artifact of such power is dangerous. The destruction of the Conclave proves that much. You don't think whatever created the explosion was destroyed in the blast? You survived, did you not? The artifact that created the breach is unlike anything seen in this age. I will not believe it destroyed until I see the shattered fragments with my own eyes. We would do well to try to recover whatever created the breach. Liliana's people have scoured the area near the blast and found nothing. Whatever the artifact was, it is no longer there. In any case, did you need me for anything? We'll talk later. Goodbye. What can I do for you? What do you know about the Fade? A great deal, from my wanderings. There are a few hard facts, but I can share what I have learned. I'd like to know more about the Breach. Simply put, it is a tear in the veil between this world and the Fade, allowing spirits to enter the world physically. Small tears occur naturally when magic weakens the veil, or when spirits cluster at an area that has seen many deaths. But your mark allows you to exert some control over the breach. That means it was created deliberately. I'd like to know more about the Veil. Circle mages call it a barrier between this world and the Fade. But according to my studies in ancient elven lore, that is a vast oversimplification. Without it, imagine if spirits entered freely. The Fade was not a place one went, but a state of nature like the wind. It sounds like it would be wonderful. And dangerous. But yes, a world where imagination defines reality, where spirits are as common as trees or grass. Instead, spirits are strange and fearful, and the Fade is a terrifying world touched only by mages and dreamers. I am glad that I'm not alone in seeing the beauty of such a world, along with the obvious peril. I'd like to know more about demons. The Chantry says that demons hate the natural world and seek to bring their chaos and destruction to the living. But such simplistic labels misconstrue their motivations, and in so doing, do all a great disservice. Spirits wish to join the living. And a demon? Is that wish gone wrong? Is there a way to coexist? To live with them? If not in peace, at least without such active confrontation? 
Not in the world we know today. The veil creates a barrier that makes true understanding most unlikely. But the question is a good one, and it matters that you thought to ask. We'll talk later. Goodbye. Greetings. I'd like to know more about you, Solus. Why? You're an apostate. Yet you risked your freedom to help the Inquisition. Not the wisest course of action when framed that way. I appreciate the work you're doing, Solus. I just wanted to know more about you. I'm sorry. With so much fear in the air. What would you know of me? What made you start studying the Fade? I grew up in a village to the north. There was little to interest a young man, especially one gifted with magic. But as I slept, the spirits of the Fade showed me glimpses of wonders I had never imagined. I treasured my dreams. Being awake, out of the Fade, became troublesome. Did spirits try to tempt you? No more than a brightly colored fruit is deliberately tempting you to eat it. I learned how to defend myself from more aggressive spirits, and how to interact safely with the rest. I learned how to control my dreams with full consciousness. There was so much I wanted to explore. I gather you didn't spend your entire life dreaming. No. Eventually, I was unable to find new areas in the Fade. Why? Two reasons. First, the Fade reflects the world around it. Unless I traveled, I would never find anything new. Second, the Fade reflects and is limited by our imaginations. To find interesting areas, one must be interesting. Is this why you joined the Inquisition? I joined the Inquisition because we were all in terrible danger. If our enemies destroyed the world, I would have nowhere to lay my head while dreaming of the Fade. I wish you luck. Thank you. In truth, I have enjoyed experiencing more of life to find more of the Fade. How so? You train to flick a dagger or an arrow to its target. The grace with which you move is a pleasing side benefit. You have chosen a path whose steps you do not dislike because it leads to a destination you enjoy. As have I. You said you traveled to many different places. This world, or its memory, is reflected in the Fade. Dream in ancient ruins, and you may see a city lost to history. Some of my fondest memories were found in crumbling cities. Long picked dry by treasure seekers, the best of the battlefields. Spirits press so tightly on the veil that you can slip across with but a thought. Any place in particular? I dreamt at Ostagar. I witnessed the brutality of the Darkspawn and the valor of the Ferelden warriors. I saw Alistair and the hero Ferelden light the signal fire, and Loghain's infamous betrayal of Caelan's forces. I've heard the stories. It would be interesting to hear what it was really like. That's just it. In the Fade, I see reflections created by spirits who react to the emotions of the warriors. One moment, I see heroic wardens lighting the fire and a power-mad villain sneering as he lets King Caelan fall. The next, I see an army overwhelmed and a veteran commander refusing to let more soldiers die in a lost cause. You can't tell which is real. It is the Fade. They are all real. Have you always traveled and studied alone? Not at all. I have built many lasting friendships. Spirits of wisdom. Possessed of ancient knowledge, happy to share what they had seen. Spirits of purpose helped me search. Even wisps, curious and playful, would point out treasures I might have missed. I don't know of any spirits by those names. They rarely seek this world. When they do, their natures do not often survive exposure to the people they encounter. Wisdom and purpose are too easily twisted to pride and desire. You're saying that you became friends with pride and desire demons? They were not demons for me. Meaning? The Fade reflects the minds of the living. If you expect a spirit of wisdom to be a pride demon, it will adapt. And if your mind is free of corrupting influences, if you understand the nature of the spirit, they can be fast friends. I'm impressed that you could become friends with spirits. Anyone who can dream has the potential. Few ever try. My friends comforted me in grief, and shared my joy. Yet, because they exist without form, as we understand it, the Chantry declares that spirits are not truly people. Is Cassandra defined by her cheekbones, and not her faith? Varric by his chest hair, and not his wit? I 
hadn't thought about it that way. But I see your point. I... thank you. Few are willing to entertain such a notion. We'll talk later. Goodbye. Hello. We'll talk later. Goodbye. Are we going to have new verses in the Chant of Light now for the Herald of Andras? Telling you. So, now that Cassandra's out of earshot, are you holding up all right? I mean, you go from being the most wanted criminal in Thetis to joining the armies of the faithful. Most people would have spread that out over more than one day. I don't even want to think about how many lives were lost on that mountaintop. A lot of good men and women didn't make it out of there. For days now, we've been staring at the breach, watching demons and maker knows what fall out of it. Bad for morale would be an understatement. I still can't believe anyone was in there and lived. If it was that bad, why did you stay? Cassandra said you were free to go. I like to think I'm as selfish and irresponsible as the next guy, but this? Thousands of people died on that mountain. I was almost one of them. And now there's a hole in the sky. Even I can't walk away and just leave that to sort itself out. I'm still not sure I believe that any of this is really happening. If this is all just the Maker winding us up, I hope there's a damn good punchline coming. You might want to consider running at the first opportunity. I've written enough tragedies to recognize where this is going. Heroes are everywhere. I've seen that. But the hole in the sky... That's beyond heroes. We're going to need a miracle. Need something? I've read your tale of the champion, and I have a few questions. That's a pretty common reaction. Go ahead. What happened to the mage who destroyed the Kirkwall Chantry? The book never said. Hawk made him stay to help put out the fire he caused. But eventually he moved on. Nobody else wanted him in Kirkwall. I don't know where he is now, and I don't want to know. In the book, you say that First Enchanter Orsino turned himself into a giant monster made of corpses. How? Why? Do I look like an expert on magical weirdness to you? Well, I can't tell you how. For the why, all I can say is he was desperate. There is no way Hawk really could have killed the Arishok. It would have started a war with the Kunari. I was told later that the Kunari disavowed his actions. Apparently, the Arashok didn't get permission before he attacked Kirkwall, and the Kuhn didn't want another exalted march. When they finally sent a ship to haul the Red Dreadnought away, they just said, We will never speak of this again. As far as I can tell, that's the Kuhn's version of an apology. Where are the rest of Hawk's associates now? Meryl decided to look after the elves left homeless by the fighting. She's done a pretty good job of keeping them away from the mages and Templars, so far. I guess she has plenty of practice avoiding stupid human battles with her old Dalish clan. Fenris has kept himself busy, hunting down the Tevinter slavers who came south to prey on the refugees. I'm not sure exactly where he is at the moment. You can usually follow the trail of corpses, though. Isabella went back to the raiders. She's calling herself an admiral now. I don't know if she's actually in charge, or just has a really big hat. Might be the same thing, honestly. Sebastian went back to Starkhaven. I'm sure he's boring all sorts of people there. Hawk's little sister is in the Free Marches, helping some of the other survivors from the Kirkwall Circle. Aveline is still guard captain. I'm pretty sure Kirkwall would fall into the sea if she quit her job. Need something? I've read your tale of the champion, and I have a few questions. That's a pretty common reaction. Go ahead. Carry on. Need something? The red lyrium we found at the temple seemed to upset you. My brother Bartrand and I sort of discovered red lyrium during an expedition in the Deep Roads. 
We located an ancient taig, so old it barely looked dwarven. There was this idol there made of it. Bartran brought it back to the surface, and, well, everything's gone downhill from there. So what is it? Just another kind of lyrium? The red stuff is lyrium like a dragon is a lizard. It's not just a different color. It has a whole host of weirdness all its own. I've written to every mining cast house in Orzammar. No one's seen this stuff before or knows where it came from. What makes it special? Regular lyrium can mess you up pretty badly, but you have to ingest it for that to happen. Red lyrium messes with your mind when you're just near the stuff. You hear singing, get violent, paranoid, and then it does creepy shit. Makes things float, brings statues to life. I've had a few alchemists studying it in Kirkwall, in shifts. Why do you have red lyrium? My brother kept a sliver when he sold it. I'm pretty sure he held on to it because it was already talking to him. That little shard drove him mad. I had him taken to a sanitarium and eventually found the fragment in his house. We brought the shit to the surface, Bartrand and I. I wanted to find out if there was a way to shut it up. So far, it looks like the answer is no. If Red Lyrium is as dangerous as you say, why do you keep it? I've heard that shit singing to me. I know better than anyone how bad it is. In Orzum, our miners keep regular non-crazy raw lyrium in special lead-lined containers. Actually, it's a huge secret how they're constructed. Keeps surface folk from horning in on the lyrium trade. I pulled a lot of strings and got a smith to build me four of them nested inside each other. Nobody gets to study it up close for more than an hour, and they have to wait a week between shifts. I think that's enough on Red Lyrium. Yeah, not really my favorite subject. Need something? Can I ask you something, Varric? You want to talk about me? <laughs> I'm flattered. Also inclined toward extravagant lies. Are you from Ferelden? Ole? Free marches. Born and raised in Kirkwall. And despite whatever you've heard, no. Kirkwall's not that bad. I'm not clear on your line of work. You're a merchant. I'm a businessman. My family has a seat in the Dwarven Merchants Guild. Merchants buy and sell goods. Businessmen buy and sell stores. In my spare time, I manage a spy network and occasionally... I write books. If you've run a spy network, why is Leliana our spy master? To be honest with you, she's just a better spy master. The truly great ones can keep their distance. They don't get attached to their people. Me, I always wind up babysitting my informants and worrying about their families. We're in better hands with her. You're an author. What kind of books have you written? I've tried my hands at a few genres. My crime serials are my most popular. Hard in Hightown, guards breaking the rules to get things done. The Tale of the Champion is the most famous thing I've written, or infamous, maybe. I started a romance serial once, Swords and Shields, but to be honest, I don't have a knack for romances. Most of my stories end in tragedy. Probably that says something unfortunate about me personally. What sort of shops do you own? Actually, we don't own shops. That was just an example. Mostly we invest in money lenders. Auction houses, a few mercenary companies, a couple of smithies. I think we own half a beet plantation in Ravane somewhere. Most of that's my brother's doing. Bartrand had business sense. Not much tact, but loads of business sense. How do you and Cassandra know each other? You heard about the Kirkwall Chantry being destroyed? The guy responsible used to be a friend of mine. The Seeker had questions about that, and I had answers. Where did you get that crossbow? I've never seen one like it. Bianca? She's one of a kind. 
I won her from Paragon Smith Bronca in a game of Wicked Grace. She was such a sore loser. Ran off to the deep roads in a huff, and that was the last anyone saw of her. Who's she named for? I can't tell you. And the reason for that is? Complicated. It's the one story I'll never tell. We just have to leave it at that. Thanks, Farrick. No problem. Need something? Carry on. Here, sir. With Segret's compliments, sir. No catch, sir. Said he wanted to help the Inquisition. Plus, I think the herbs were going to go off and nobody wanted to buy them. I think Segret wanted people to like him. Do you think the mages will be able to seal the breach? I heard some speak of using the Templars instead. Oh. world are finite. What one man gains, another has lost. Those who steal from their brothers and sisters do harm to their livelihood. Thank you for hurrying with the po Ah, you're awake and out of Lady Cassandra's clutches. And here I paid that little knife ear to inform me the moment you were free. No matter, no matter. Segret, honored to meet you. Thank you for all you've done, and hopefully will still do. What do you think I'll be doing exactly? Word's already spreading that if anyone can close that blighted thing in the sky, it's you. Anything you need is yours. For a reasonable price, of course. Supplies are a little tight, given the circumstances. What kind of person stays to run a shop at a time like this? The kind with nowhere else to go. Those blasted demons destroy most of my goods. If I stay here, work some contacts, I can start rebuilding. Maybe, just maybe, help you folks out in the process. You must speak with most everyone here. How are people doing? Hope and fear in equal measure. No one really knows what it means when an Inquisition is called. Yet, I imagine it's no better for you. You've got my sympathies, for what it's worth. Can I see what you have for sale? Of course. My wares are at the table. I don't see why we need to build siege equipment. We're not laying siege to it anymore. That's an excellent point, recruit. All men are the work of our maker's hands. From the lowest slaves to the highest kings. If the Inquisition wants to field a decent cavalry, it needs better horses. Expected you'd be by. I'm Harrit. And everyone knows who you are. How's the new gear fit? It doesn't really matter in the long run. Of course it does. World's gone mad. Stock armor and blades are good against bandits, but we're not fighting bandits. My gear will see you through demons, apostates, whatever this world throws at you. So, you need custom work. Something special. You bring the materials to us, we'll make it happen. How did you come to be here? Come from a little town called Lothring. Long gone now. I was in Redcliffe when the Darkspawn hit it during the Blight. Helped rebuild. Left when Walty decided it was time to hand the place over to the bloody mages. Ended up here. Just missed the boom. Can't decide if I'm the luckiest son of a bitch walking or the exact opposite.
You're still walking. That's always good. True enough. Who outfits the Inquisition soldiers? Not me. I've got work to do. Can't be passing a sword to every blighter who signs up. If you want to help the troops, talk to Thren, the Quartermaster. She'll set up requisitions. Does the Inquisition not have supplies to make armor or weapons? Tough convincing traders to haul up here. Impossible to get them to risk the rare stuff, so that's on you. What can you and your team make here? Arms and armor. We work iron to blighted dragon bone, if you've got it. Our designs are simple, but they get the job done. You want something fancy? Bring your own design. We'll see what we can do. Can you help improve my arms and armor? Yes. You find a new piece, a pauldron or greaves, we'll take care of you. You can't just slap a new hilt on your sword in the field. Bring it here, we'll make sure it's done right and proper. If I want something, what can you make? Start simply. Something to keep you safe. Take a look at it on the table there and we can talk. You'll need materials. We should have what you want just outside. Goodbye. Right. You need something? Let me know. You need something? Let me know. Another time. Another time, then. Mm. Goodbye. Right. One down!
Might be something here. Better take a closer look.